um, I, I, off and on since 2008. Like my first one was with Kobe. I, I interviewed Kobe 2008 and then got back into it 2012. Yeah. No, 14. They were doing, yeah, two podcasts in 2008. Yeah, I was doing it early. Damn, you spent one of the first ones. I was probably first athlete for sure. Yeah. To do your own independent podcast? Yeah. Yeah, I got a series of podcasts. Wait, so you had a podcast in 2008? I had one that I was doing with Fox. Then I wanted to interview athletes, but it was ahead of the, it was ahead of the time. Like they didn't really understand it. Yeah. <laughs> so now everybody's doing it. And it's then, crazy. It's it is such it's becoming so much more popular now. Like it just makes sense. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wanna hear like, you know, all this random People that don't know much about the area they're in. Just commentators who aren't really, like, from there. Well, you know, when you're talking about entertainment, sports, you know, commentary, it's about the entertainment factor. So sometimes it has nothing to do with the game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like right now, even a lot of the fans are smart. So even right now, there's a lot of traveling in basketball. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're watching, but it's a lot of traveling. And the fans is kind of disgusted with that, right? So sometimes they want to hear from player, a player's perspective, whereas the commentary... Like, for example, that push, I don't know if you watched the finals the other night, but the guy yeah. got pushed in the back. Why do you think people get away with traveling way more now? Well, uh, I think it's just a thing where... I feel like it's the refs are watching the players like because they want to watch the player like as a superstar, you know? Well, back in the days, that was a travel. A travel is a travel. Yeah. Right now, it's not necessarily a travel. So it's hard to, it's hard to say why oh, so much traveling. I don't even understand it. But the fans can see it. The fans yeah. are like... I think you're going to see a change. The game's going to change in a couple of years, I think. It like in what regards? That sort of it's stuff? The fundamentals are going to get better. It's getting better already. Yeah. But why do you so think it, why, do, why do you think people are, it seems like the NBA is so much softer now than when you played? It's just the rules. It's not the, it's not the actual players. It's more the rules. So it's not the players. That's what's the question. Like, was it the, is it the actual game or is it the? It's not the players. It's the rules. Yeah. If you give the players leeway, if they can do this and get away with it, then they'll do that and get away with it. Yeah. Right. Like the floppy got crazy where it's like we're jump like you're constantly. That's a ref thing. That's just seeing it. If I'm refing a game and I see somebody flop, I'm not going to call it. You know? Yeah. Where where you might call it because I think the game in the American sports is aggressive. Like Americans typically, for, for years, we've been aggressive. Yeah. Right. So then when you're trying to make it a global game, when you're coming into this dome of America, you got to bring your A game. Yeah. But now you don't have to bring your A physical game. You can just bring your finesse game yeah. now in America. Play the because we rules. made it we made it cool. And we we we, we playing nice now. Yeah, it's, I don't like <laughs> it. We playing nice. Like when in you America played it was now. like it was different. I just felt like it was it was way more aggressive. Like overall, like it seems like it seems like people overall or players overall were just more like about it. But it, it, at times it was a little too much at times honestly, but yeah, like the over the top, you know, swinging and punching somebody in the face. All right, that's a little too much. But, yeah. you know, the dislodging somebody or, or keeping somebody from cutting or having that physical kind. This is a human body. The yeah. symmetry is just incredible. Yeah. You know, and people want to see, you know, how God made you versus how he made yeah. someone else, female or male. So from that perspective, the the um, the grace part is great. But then also the physical part is yeah. great. Everybody got different attributes. So if you're Allen Iverson, well, you're going to use your speed, and that's going to look incredible. Yeah. If you Shaq, you're going to use your strength, and that's yeah. going to just look incredible. But right now, what they're doing is making it more about the, the fluent part of the game yeah. and taking away the yeah. big, muscular, 6'10", power forward. Like the technicalities of like yeah. the refing and the sort of like what you can or can't do. Yeah, what you can lenient. and can't do is... Is, is lending itself to not seeing as many standard four, which is 6'10". Yeah. 6'9 and 6'11 is like a standard four, maybe 6'8 and a half. Yeah. Then 6'10 and a half to 7, you know, whatever, 7'1 or 7'2. That's your center. And now you don't see that no more. Now it's like 6'7 center. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it'll go back? I think at some point it's going to go back because even people talk about the, the ratings, it's a better game now. You know, these are just people coming up with rules, sitting at a round table with other decision makers, pretty much kissing butt to stay yeah. in the loop. So now you're talking about, oh, let's change the rules to make it more of a global game. Predictive analytics when there's nothing to predict. You can't predict how a fan is going to feel yeah. 
you could try. But now when you look at the ratings, which I'm a big NBA fan, I'm a supporter of the NBA, and I'm always like, I'm a big time supporter of the NBA. But when you look at the ratings now, with this championship game versus the, the one where Michael Jordan played, the highest ever viewed game. Yeah. So how does that justify that this game is better than what the fans want to see? Well, I don't think it does. Yeah, I mean, it, it just doesn't. I think now the salaries are going up. That's because AI, automation, digital, um, more consumer, direct-to-consumer experiences. So just by default, the money is going to go up and the game yeah. is going to grow from a financial perspective. Right. You know, if you had this same technology when Michael Jordan was there, direct oh, to consumer would have been experiences. Nuts. Yeah, this is incredible. Now you're talking about, you know, so he still would have been breaking records back then, and he's breaking records now. So I think sometimes we we try to predict or try to control how a human is going to think, versus just let the game flow. You don't have to change much. Yeah, the game is going to grow, but we still are on this planet. We was here in the '90s, and we saw what we liked. Yeah. And then as a fan, we, we made our children become fans. It's not, you know, the, the future didn't make our children become fans. It was us or my parents that was like, watch this game. You see this game? Yeah. And then we became fans of that style. Yeah. So now we're just trying to totally change the it game. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> what would you, how would you do it differently? Like if you, were, if you could make the rules different, what would you do? I think like what I would do is um, definitely... You know, keep it as it was. Maybe a couple of little tweaks here and there. Um, the All-Star game, I know a lot of people don't want to play or they're like, why? But when you look at the All-Star game and the fans is like, wow, this is not like it was in the 90s or even 2000. Yeah. Right? When Jordan had his last game against Kobe, RIP Kobe. So yeah. from that perspective, it's not up to the players to say, you know, why do I have to play? It's not your choice. Yeah. You got to play. I think that's the that's the excitement people, of it. It's the excitement, 100%. Like, people locked out. Look at all the players that locked out in 98 and even in 2011 and whenever the other time was. Now, they're, they're forgetting that some of the players that locked out, you don't know their names. They actually lost real money. They lost real money. Delonte yeah. West lost real money. Antoine Walker... He lost real money. They're looking at it like, oh, I'm here, and we're the reason why <clears throat> money's going up. No, it's not. It's because of the sacrifices that was made, and now we're fans, and we want to see you play in the All-Star game. Yeah, when you retire year one, and they'll see. When and when you, you talk about playing, you mean like actually play hard, not just around. Yeah, play to win. Like I'm yeah. not saying go hack somebody, but, but good grief. You know, play defense. Nobody yeah. gets an open shot. Lock them up. If he is not ready to pl play in this game, then he's not ready. When we played, they lucky I wasn't playing in the All-Star game. Because when I played, <laughs> yeah. I was going in. Yeah. And Kobe was going in. Yeah. So if Kobe's your so-called favorite player, but then you don't have to play hard, or if you're being sponsored by Michael Jordan and you respect Michael Jordan that much, it's, you know, I get it because the money is different. So yeah. these, these are actual chairmen and corporations on the court. <laughs> this yeah. is not like it was when you were a player on the court. He's the actual chairman on the court now. Yeah. So I get that piece. You got a lot to think about. But at some point in time, you know, as a fan, we want to watch the game. I want to sit there and watch the All Star game, you know, and be like, man, I should have did that. I could have did that. But I'm actually enjoying the game. Now I don't want to be at the point where I leave in the arena early because this is just disgusting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Do you, is there anything as far as your career goes that you wish you would have done? Obviously, everyone's going to say win more, but like, you know, like a lot of people like go towards stats or they, you know, obviously everyone wants rings, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but like, if that's not like a viable thing because of the team and this whole like team jumping thing now and everything <laughs> yeah. that they, they have going on, I think we say LeBron started that. No way. No? A lot of people, LeBron, it, you know, he's done things that, He's done. Michael Jordan did things that he did. Yeah. Right? Um, Jerry Krause also done things that he did, like break up the team. Yeah. Everybody has a different journey. I don't think LeBron started it. I mean, when you saw Charles Barkley uh, go to the Rockets, LeBron wasn't even in the league. 
Yeah. Right? Barkley wanted to win a title. When you saw Gary Payton go to the Lakers that first time or Mitch Richmond, LeBron wasn't in the league at that time. So we can't keep blaming LeBron for yeah. every single thing. Yeah. People love, they love to blame that bro. And I feel bad because, like, LeBron, he's so competitive. When I saw LeBron at 15 years old, when I seen him in the gym, I was like, wow, he should be in the NBA right now. At 15? Yeah, at 15. Summertime was a famous, <clears throat> a lot of conversations go around, interviews, a lot of people talk about the famous Michael Jordan games in Chicago. And then when, I, when he got to the league, my whole thing is being competitive. So if I'm going to be competitive against Michael Jordan, against Kobe, I, I, I view LeBron as on that same level, even though he's five years younger. So at some point, you got to be a bigger OG. But LeBron was so talented, you don't really get a chance to be an OG because you just want to compete. Yeah. Like, this guy's a man. You know, so, so as sometimes, you know, as an older player, you got to take your foot off the gas in terms of, oh, I want to compete because it's so many shots being thrown at him. Yeah. You know, people expected this 17-year-old kid to make big shots at 17. And he, he'll miss a big shot. And they say he's not like whoever, not like MJ, for example. Well, MJ was 21 years old when he first got into the NBA. Yeah. LeBron was 17. Pressure's Even insane. Even though I think MJ career, his stats is a little bit more impressive than LeBron's stats. When you talk about LeBron's, like, number one scorer of all time. Yeah. The, the longest career and most dominant throughout the whole time, then you when you compare that to MJ's nine scoring titles, or if you compare it to his six championships, five, you know, so it is some stats that on a scale yeah. might weigh MJ's way. But at the same time, you know, you can't, you know, people LeBron so you're not, you started can't, early. You can't pick out of those. You know, everyone's like Kobe, LeBron, Jordan. You can't pick who's the greatest because well, it's different times and the, the thing with Kobe and myself, Kobe was in an era where at one point in time I was like the best defender. Yeah, in the league. Yeah, and, yeah. and then I'm like, and, and my, my, I was an apex defender. Apex, yeah, yeah. you know, um, Tarantosaurus Rex. Yeah, you were I'm crazy. thinking I'm just going to eat up everybody. But sometimes like a guy like Kobe, although I didn't back down, he was very successful. So it's a different mindset when I was thinking of Kobe, even when I joined his team. Yeah. Because I'm like, man, I, he's still my competitor at that point or my, uh, the opponent versus a guy like MJ. I'm just looking up to MJ. You yeah. see, so for me, I feel emotionally different. And then a guy like LeBron, I'm like, wow, I'm just like impressed with LeBron. So I don't get a chance to appreciate like a Kobe or a Tim Duncan because we was in that same era of, you know, I don't want to be on your team. I want to play against you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of hard to like play yeah. it. But I think, you know, LeBron's career is super impressive. But I still think MJ and, and even Will Chamberlain, a lot of Will Chamberlain is the great, is the GOAT. Okay. <laughs> Let's just, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Chamberlain's for sure number one goat all time. Fair, fair. So I have a question. You you, you were telling kind of like, I saw this clip. I don't know if it was a clip or if I just read this somewhere, but you, you were talking about when LeBron, there was like a scrimmage or some game that you were playing with Jordan yeah. and LeBron, and LeBron was, I think, 16. Yeah, And this yeah. is when he got the title, like the term of like the one. And then he, I guess he scored over you, and, and Jordan looked at you and was like, oh, he's the one. No, that it is a lot of different stories. That definitely wasn't one of the stories. No. But it was, some things that happened in the gym was LeBron was just playing very well. Like, he was playing against all-stars at that time in that gym and posting at them up. At 16. 15, 16. I think I played against him twice in that gym, but it could have been one time. But I do remember him playing very well. Yeah. You know, and, and I was still, I was 20, I was 19 or 20. Yeah. He's five years younger, so I remember going up against him, and on a fast break, he was coming full speed. And I was like, wow, this body looks different coming at me than yeah. the NBA player's body. Yeah. So even when I got in front of him and checked him, and you know, I kind of he was young, so I checked him up, I put him on the floor, but he might not have even fell on the floor. Honestly, I can't quite remember, but I remember him being able to absorb it, getting up and playing the game. Yeah. At 15 years old. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Damn. Such a it's you you played in like such a golden era of basketball. Yeah. You played with a lot of legends man who was a lot of legends who do you think like who do you think you had the most fun playing with or like who stands out the most playing with or against this uh, with on with? your team uh i mean kobe stands out obviously because watching kobe is, is really almost magical you know you know you know he's only human you know there's no aliens on the team yeah they do say he's aliens in disguise <laughs> <laughs> yeah like <laughs> they do say it's aliens in disguise. Who knows, man? That's so a whole nother conspiracy. Who, that's a whole nother conspiracy. Yeah, who's, yeah. That, who, who's, who's the actual NBA alien, right? But 
You know, but watching Kobe is uh, my, it was magical. Yeah. Because it's certain things that you like me, I, me as a player, for example, twenty-seven and oh in high school in New York City, three yeah. championships at the Rucker, or whatever you want to call it. All this cool stuff. Then you're playing against another level, and you want to be like that. You want to yeah. be like Mike. Yeah. That's a real commercial. That really hit us home. We want to <laughs> be like Mike. But when you're watching a guy like Kobe, like, wow, this is different. Like, so you mean to tell me if I work on my game like this, I can play like Kobe? Okay, let me try that. Oh, it's not quite working. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not quite, it's not quite panning out. You know, I think Kobe was great. Yao Ming was incredible. Uh, Yao Ming, to me, was the most dominant player that I've played with. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't on the Rockets, huh? Yeah, he yeah. couldn't really stop him. Just, just, just because of the sheer size, or he just knew skill. how to also, yeah, size and skill. Yeah, you couldn't stop him. Is there anyone now that you you would, if you watch the game now, you can like make similarities to, or is everyone just so unique? No, well, I always tell people um, because of my because my career was my awards wasn't. Um, uh, maximize or optimize because I should have had more. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say. Why oh, didn't you get more? Well, just the suspensions. Yeah. I still got a lot. Yeah. I still got a lot. You know, yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. cool. But I got some ones that's, 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 I can make an argument for being in the Hall of Fame when you talk about the defense. Yeah. Why players. did they snub you? I don't get it. I'm not snubbed yet because you still no. got time. Okay. I'm not a first ballot. Okay. I, I would have been a first ballot if I would have had, had my head on straight. <laughs> yeah. A why do you think? Why do you think you were so just wild? I think like the game, but I just love the game so much. And you know, I'm used to playing in New York City, like Gun Hill Road or Gershwin Park. Everybody play on Gershwin Park now in Brooklyn. I played in the real Gershwin, <laughs> where there was no advertisement, where there was no security. That's the real Gershwin. I played in the real Gun Hill in the Bronx. You know, from that perspective, the way I play on a street, yeah. on a concrete. I brought that type of style to the league and it just doesn't mix all the time. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I think there's, there's players that I admire, like um, when I went out to see the game and I kind of visualize like a Kawhi Leonard, like a Maxi, um, like a, uh, who else am I? There's a couple of players. I, I like Jeremy Grant. I wouldn't compare. He's not, I like his game. I like, I like Grant's game, but it's a little bit not, the same, but he's really talented, plays defense, plays offense. Yeah. Might even been an all-star, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple guys I like. So so the obviously I think one of your most viral moments, and I think honestly one of the most viral moments in like sports history is the fight uh, at the palace. Yeah. What like explain that? Because obviously you were I, I you see the clip, you're laying down, and someone just yeah. tosses something at you. Right. Why why did you why do you think you snap? Why do you think you said it? I mean, you can answer that. You just Yeah, you do something at you. Well, just uh, you answer it first, and then I'll answer. It, well, I, yeah, I mean, it's disrespectful, obviously. Okay, you're, okay. You're, you're playing the game, obviously, for these people. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering why, like, then you were like, fuck I mean, it. you just answered it. Yeah, okay. You just said it was disrespectful. Was, uh, it is, it is. All right, so you just answered it. Fair, fair. <laughs> but I can talk about the moment, but it's very important that people answer that. It's like, you know, your no, teacher, there's no, there's it's no, like your teacher gives you a problem. Okay, here's the problem. That I want you to solve. Well, I can't solve it. You might have to solve it. You know, it's that type of thing. It's, you know, it's a, it's a thing where you know media does have influence. Yeah. Over how we think. Yeah. That's you know right. And, and then I think it's a thing where, um, when you look at the first comments from the commentary, they were saying this is really a disgrace on how a fan could throw something at a player, but when you look at that next day, the commentary changed. And the one a gentleman who mentioned that got fired off the network. So then now, you, now you, your, your kind of comment is one that you... Because you, you're seeing it on YouTube. You probably wasn't there. No, yeah, no. You, you probably saw it on YouTube. Yeah. Or maybe you saw it live. So from that perspective, you're taking in that information. You know, just, but just, just, just from that perspective, um, so what wait, happened? The media tried to frame it like it was just bad for the players to do that. Well, right? the, the way they framed it was, well, in terms of editing... The editors probably got, you know, their marching orders from their executives. So how, how they edited it, the clips was from table to stands. Yeah. But you couldn't quite take out the cup edit because the cup, uh, the only, if you would have took out that edit of the cup splashing, then you would have saw my back to the camera running into the stands. 
So that kind of saved me a little bit in the yeah. grace of the people, right? But then when the, when the documentaries came out, then they showed the whole clip. It showed the toss yeah. of the hand. But th that, that next day, they didn't show that full clip. And then the media, the, 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 um, the marching orders was, this is the story. And then the story was, um, players cannot, you know, fight fans even if a fan wants to hit a player. But it's like, why the f are you, like, throwing something at someone is just like, come on. It was on, a $50 man. bet. So I know the guy, John, we're friends. The guy who actually threw the cup, that's oh, like he a friend. Bet, someone said, I bet you won't do that. Well, what happened was the two gentlemen were in, in that frame, in that frame. Yeah. Right? So what happened was the one gentleman who raised his arm up, you'll see that. He bet John Green $50 that he couldn't hit me with a cup of beer <laughs> as I was laying on the stands. And I found this out because as I was depressed for years and I missed my defensive player of the year award, I yeah. missed the all-star game, I missed another all-team. I just made 13 more NBA, averaging 18 points and the best defender. That year I was averaging 25. Yeah, you so were now, going crazy. I, that year I was averaging 25 and I, the prior year averaging 18, I finished number six in MVP. So here we are, the best team in the league so now I'm like moving up to number three of two for MVP. Yeah. You only get a small window of opportunity for MVP. It's not a big window unless you're LeBron or Kobe. Right. So from that perspective, I was a little bit frustrated and depressed. Like, damn, I missed out on my award, my all-star. So anyway, I reached out to him years later. We became friends. He said, hey, man, I got something to tell you. I was wrong at the time. He said, it was, he said, I'm really sorry about what happened. He apologized. He, he apologized yeah. to me. And the media still have yet to apologize for the way they edited it, those yeah. document, the, you know, the, the edits, the, the clips, and then also the titles, the subtitles. But um, he said, sorry. He said it was a $50 bet. Um, I think the gentleman's name was Ryan. So when, 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 when John threw the cup, Ryan went like this. So as I'm laying on the scores table and I'm looking up, I see this guy like this. So I'm like, that's the direction I got hit. And he, he must have hit me. And everybody said I hit the wrong person. But, but the, but the, I think it was about hundreds of millions of people that was commenting. They were all wrong because he was the one. Hundreds of millions of people was wrong because he made the bet. I actually hit the right person. Yeah, the guy who, the guy <laughs> who the said guy, to do it. The guy who threw the cup would have never threw the cup if the guy the make didn't the make the bet. Yeah. So a $50 bet costs $6 million that year. It costs more contracts Fuck. in the future. So that's like now you're talking about 50 to $60 million. You're that's talking about. I lost Same. every endorsement deal. I lost my signature shoe that day. I lost my college juniors commercial that was about to be signatured up. Holy day. I lost all three of my uh, ESPN and TNT commercials pulled off the air. You never even seen those commercials. Right? Whoa, so whoa. anyway, from that perspective. What, what, what was that like? Like, were you, did that f*** you up when you went to go play more? Were you like, did you feel like kind of f*** this? Or? I mean, in the beginning I was, but I'm, tell, I'm from, I'm from Queens' Projects, honestly. We were super proud where we're from, Mob Deep, Nas, MC Shan, Roxanne, yeah. Shantae, other things has happened, Vern Fleming. I'm from the biggest federal housing project in America. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you're talking about someone taking something from you that you don't own anyway. I see. Because somebody else hits you. You just, you know, that's just life. And you know what you, now you know who you are uh, in the rooms with. Yeah. Would you have done it differently? If you look, um, if you knew everything you knew now. If I knew everything I know now, I would have done it differently. But I would also, um, before, before that moment comes up, knowing everything I know now, would I have done it differently? Yes. But you also got to identify the people who made it cool for a fan to hit someone, and that's okay. That's bullshit. So you also got to try to identify the names, who was involved in the rooms behind the scenes. Who said that was okay for a fan to hit a player, right? Because neither was okay. I think it was more of the fans' fault. Yeah. Who I became friends with. Yeah. Because <laughs> people tried to also make it a race war. When I seen at that time. Yeah, you, you'll see different clips. Oh, it's this that. So when I seen that, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is between two men. This had yeah. nothing to do with black and white. So me and John became friends. Everybody else out there making a big deal out of it. Yeah. And trying to, whether you're, whether you're on this side or that side. It's, this is a thing between two men. Since when did people get in between two men that got an issue? Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, <laughs> dude, even now, like now even more so than ever, like the, the, it's almost as if like people want 
people to be in a feud like because of race because of yep. anything Very like it's it's like more now than ever it's just like a let's make people hate each other it, it seems that that's what's happening on the internet. I don't know if you, how much time you spend on it or if you like on Twitter or whatever. No, it's, it's very true. I, I mean, I knew that in 2004, which is why when people see me and John Green cool, they're like, man, that wasn't the narrative I was trying to paint. Yeah. I was trying to cause up a stir. Yeah. And for me, you know, I'm always like, nah, because when it, people, as much as people say we're divided, um, I don't see it every day. I'm also not in different parts of America, but... I don't see that every day. Yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah. That's true. And we got issues and we got to solve. That's true. But I don't think it's as unbalanced as what's being portrayed yeah. in the media. Why do you think they do it that? Why do you think they want everyone to hate each other? I mean, who knows? I don't want everybody to hate each other. So yeah. I don't know why other... I mean, do other, do people want people to hate each other? Do people hate each other? Eh, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think naturally people hate each other. But yeah, sometimes you want your own space. Yeah. Sometimes you want to be, maybe a black guy want to be around his black friends one day. Yeah, for sure. Maybe an Asian girls want to be around their Asian girlfriends one day. Why not? Maybe white guys want to be around white guys. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> like, why not? Like, w when did that not become okay? Yeah. To be able to be around like-minded people or people that just look like you. Yeah. Or, or that has... doesn't make you racist or doesn't right. make you... You know what I'm saying? And it's okay if you want to be with your white friends or your Indian friends. Like, yeah. when did all of this not become okay? It's weird, dude. <laughs> it's weird now. It's, it's just, it seems as if like, it's like the conspiracy theory coming out, but it seems as if like, it's on purpose. Like they want people to be so sort of divided. I mean, I think there are individuals in plural that probably feed off this and who knows why, but... You got people like myself, yourself, and other people that, you know, look at Los Angeles. There are a lot of people that work together. Yeah. I know black execs that are hiring white interns. I know white execs that's hiring black interns and vice versa. Yeah. You know, and, you know, um, we can get it to percentages of which ethnicity is hiring the most. But yeah, you know, of course, there's not going to be equal. But I think when you're looking out on the media, if you look at that, for your information, then you're going to be like, wow, we're divided. You yeah. know, I, I, anything when it comes to race, I don't pay attention to what I see on TV. Yeah. It's sad. It's sad how that's a reality, though. Because like, yeah. it's like yeah. that's a lot of people, most people see. I mean, nowadays, this generation, everything is like internet. But there's still a whole group of people, I don't know what age bracket, I, I feel like it's like maybe 50 plus, it like only watches TV because they're just not as in tune with the internet. Yeah, and TV. I mean, if you only watch a TV, ooh, then you, that's old school. You yeah. you really don't have any information. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, or you yeah. only or you only have what they want you to see, and that was re really real. That's one hundred percent. Even you know, yeah. But I do believe like there are people that's not paying attention as much. Uh, I feel like we're in a good spot now. It's not always portrayed, but I feel like now we are in a good spot. You see a lot of people getting into social impact. You see the youth. Really, they have substance and intention with what they buy and yeah. who they hang around. That's that's the future, you know, and that's what we need to keep continue to encourage. Yeah. What uh, what was your childhood like? I, you said you obviously you grew up on the East Coast. Was yeah. it Was it like uh, both fam, both both parents there? Like, was it up? Was it good? Like, it was up until I mean, my po my parents were married for a point in time, got divorced at thirteen, but I grew up in I I, I saw both. I, I grew up in a household. Yeah. You know, and then I also. Grew, experienced the divorce part so it was it was a little bit of both my community was huge and you know other parents was like your parents back then yeah your, your other fathers was like you know you, you do something bad i i done got spanked by other parents before yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it was like that type of community yeah yeah damn it's different now i guess it depends where you come from but um do you do you see like i don't know i guess i guess on the internet how how much how much on the internet are you like Twitter and like social uh, media? I'm on the internet for other reasons, honestly. Like I love boxing. Yeah, you know, so I'm always paying attention to what's happening in boxing on, you know, on 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 the internet. Um, sometimes I'll dibble and dabble, and you'll see a headline, and you can't really avoid the gossip. But yeah, I'm not really big on that, you know. But I'm more into the boxing now. I'm watching golf, a lot of golf on it online. Yeah. Um, and then other things in technology, but I'm not necessarily into 
anything else. It may, maybe something in nature. Yeah. I really love nature and different things like that. Um, but other than that, um, not really into This might sound funny because it. it's like most times I ask this question, it's it's a little bit I, I'm not not necessarily like harder to answer or easier to answer, but how'd you find basketball? Obviously you're tall, right? But that's not all great basketball players are tall. Um, but how did you find basketball? Like how yeah. did you decide it was for you? Besides the height, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I started playing at eight. My dad needed me to get rid of some of this energy I had. I got so much energy. <laughs> For many different reasons, how I grew up, things that was happening, you know, when, you, when you're a kid, you start to get molded. So my dad thought, kept bringing me on the court. And that's when everybody was outside. Back in the days, kids was outside. Man, I think I was the last generation. I'm, I'm 35, just turned 35. I feel like I'm the last generation of kids that were like outside, outside when they were kids. Outside, packed outside. Yeah, riding bikes. Around. Go to Queensbridge now, some days in the summer, doing prime My hours. Folks are just like this. When we was outside, I don't even see nobody sometimes. Yeah. I'm just like, wow. You know? Yeah. But my dad had me on the court. And then at 10 years old, I was okay. Wasn't that good. Lost some three-on-three -three tournaments. I just kept, you know, fighting, getting better, getting better, hustling, hustling, trying to win. At 12 years old, I started playing with the men outside. You know, and then... um, um like When did you I realize you were good? Uh, I think I think I... I knew I was always tough. I had a lot of energy. But in terms of being, like, talent good and started hitting my jumper... Uh, I would say 16 years old in high school, I was like, ooh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of getting nice right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then from there, you're, like, how did it go? Were you, how, like, when do you think, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to, to go to the league? Well, I, I actually knew I could go to the league at about 16 because I was playing against some pros. I was fairly strong. So when I started to play against the men, and I was like, wow, at 16, I'm, I'm like starting on all the men leagues and winning. Yeah. So at that point, I said, all right, cool, I can go to the league. Then I tried to go out, out of high school, but then they said I was going to be a second round pick. So then I went to college, you know, two years. Yeah. Then I was a first round pick, you know, after yeah after my sophomore year. Did they change rules in the NBA with that whole after LeBron thing, like the whole at a certain age? you you? Uh, yeah, they changed it. I think it was not even just right after LeBron. It was a couple other members shortly after LeBron. But now you got to be, um yeah, I don't even think you can come out of high school right now. No, yeah. Yeah, I think you, you got to be a first, one year in college. Yeah. You know, I think there were. I think it don't matter when you come out because like a Kevin Garnett, he was ready. He had a 21 year career. Um, Sean Kemp, LeBron James. I think where it's getting kind of uh, clogged up or confused is the fundamentals, the entitlement that we are just putting on these players. We need to stop entitling these players. They need to. They, you know, they're going to be fine. We we were fine. You know, they, and, and I think that's where. You know, you have to say, okay, no more high school players because you got to point the finger at something. As far as what you mean, entitlement, like they like, like they just deserve something that they shouldn't get into the league, like as soon as possible, or I'm not saying they. I'm just saying earn everything. Okay. You know, just earn, just earn everything. You know, obviously the scale is different, but just earn everything. Like you're gonna get it; it's coming to you. But still, like earn it, not just like oh, don't don't make this player upset. Because he's gonna get mad. Oh, I Who see. cares? Yeah. You know, I don't care. I don't care how much money you make. You did this wrong. Calling you out. Go take your Bentley. Go home and be mad. <laughs> yeah. See you tomorrow in practice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that type of thing. You know, I, I think because sometimes I think that part is what's missing. Yeah. You know, and that's not these days. Players don't want that. Yeah. You know, players want the. I don't want to practice today. You know. Not everyone, but you see a lot of players just not, you know, I I don't, I remember wanting to go, I couldn't wait to get back to practice. And yeah. I'm not the only one. Michael Jordan was like that. If you look at my Indiana pace of practices with Jermaine O'Neal and Steven Jackson and, and Reggie Miller, who's a Hall of Famer, yeah, he was in practice every day. Couldn't wait to get to practice. He didn't miss practice. Do you th what do you think it is? It's just, I'm just, I'm that good, they think? Or, uh, I mean, obviously these people are. Superstar, a lot of people are not that good. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the NBA, you're good. So you can't say like an NBA player sucks. They used to say that back in the days. Also, they would say, "Man, how does player like a Brian Cardinal? All right, you you go play against Brian Cardinal one on one." <laughs> yeah. It's it's always funny the outside, like the commentators <laughs> or the fans. Yeah, it's like an NBA player is he's he's good. Yeah, you go play against Brian Cardinal one on one, you're not winning. 
<laughs> you're not winning. So and, and it's the same thing now. Yeah, you got players that are good, they've earned it, but we 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 get confused that a player is just because they're getting, you know, 10, 20 million, it doesn't mean they're as good as a player that was getting five million back in the days. I see. You see what I'm saying? It's a huge yeah. difference. The, the money's different, but the game is not the same. You're not that good. You know, I see what as you're that player, you just got way more money. Yeah, you know, than that more, player. yeah, because like we talked about earlier about the the AI, that more opportunities, more memorabilia, more sales ability. Yeah, it's more sales. Yeah. Everything's yeah. going up, and you deserve it because that's what we fought for. Yeah, you know. What, what do I mean? you think about that in regards to like you know the whole the whole conversation between like the WNBA and the NBA and how it's like women want the more money, but like there's not necessarily that many more people watching it. It's for I love there WNBA. To be money. I, I, well. I like college women's basketball. I coach Division II women's basketball at Cal State LA. So I've been coaching there for five years, and I've been coaching Palisades Girls High School. So I'm, I, love, I love the women's game. Yeah. Um, I just feel like sometimes, well, now they're doing it now, but before it was not a lot of women input on the women's game. And then it wasn't a lot of, it wasn't a lot of women supporting women's basketball. Yeah. That's the main thing. That was the main issue. Yeah. You know, so now you got a lot of men supporting you know, it's, the, the game is the women's game is growing, and honestly, besides the gentleman from NC State this year, I just couldn't tell you a lot of people's name in college. Yeah, I see. men's. I could tell you. I watched the WNBA draft. You know, I, I'm actually trying to get a couple of their jerseys right now to wear. Yeah. Um, not because I don't like men's basketball, but this year, you know, the women are on fire. Yeah, the Kay Caitlin Clark came out crazy. Yeah, Caitlin there's a, Clark is But there's sick. a lot of, like, there's. it seems to be a lot of, like, hate against her. Uh, I, I I don't think so. I think I think what's happening is the WNBA women, they great. And they're going to show Caitlin that you're going to have to work for this. So I, I, I think the media is creating a lot of it. Because if, if I was, like, a player that's playing against Caitlin, I'm coming into the game, I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm not about to be worried about how good you are and yeah. then what contract you got. So now it's going to get magnified that I'm looking like I I'm, see what you're saying. I'm doing the same thing against the next player the next night. So I think, I think like once again, people are trying to baby Caitlyn. Yeah. Right. And, and and they're trying to force entitlement. Right. And now they're making it seem like it's some war when right now. This is the time to celebrate the WNBA. It's not the time to only be reporting on that because Caitlin's going to earn it. She, she will earn it. Yeah. She's that type of player. Yeah. You know what I mean? She, she's so you think it's just the competitiveness player. where it's like they, they're they like, maybe it's the competitiveness that's happening is being portrayed differently than like what's actually happening. Women's basketball is competitive. That's why I love coaching women's basketball. You know, way before, and now it's hot. Everybody's like, women's basketball. We've been coaching women's basketball for the last nine years. Women's basketball is competitive. Yeah. And it's fundamentally sound. It's exciting. Yeah. You know, so from that perspective, like, let Caitlin earn it. She will earn it. Yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. She's had 30 the other night. You seem to be ahead of your time. You were ahead of your time on the podcast and stuff. You're ahead of your time on it. Yeah, you're, head of you're the that time, guy. Head of the time with the name change you saw. Yeah. Name. You saw all the players put different names in the back of the jerseys. Yeah. That's one. Podcast, Give this man his flowers. Podcast, Let's go. Podcasting way ahead. Yeah. That's crazy when you did it. <laughs> Women's basketball way ahead. Yeah. And many other things. I'm just saying like, well, I think the reason I was ahead because I'm super curious. So when you're talking about podcasting, you know, in 2014, it's lining it up like this with the microphones. It's on YouTube. It was like, because you see the vision. I'm a, I went back to school for digital marketing. Oh, really? Yeah. When oh. I was. I was always doing technology, even when I retired. So now you're paying attention to predictive analytics and what's happening in technology and how it's going to shape the world. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Even when you look at the NFTs, when you look at all the athletes that had these, not it wasn't their fault that things were being rug pulled. But the problem was you don't really understand the ins and outs of the NFT world and, and how long you got to be in the game. You can't just get in and out. Yeah, And if you don't understand the compliance attached behind it, so this is like things that I've been doing for a long time. So from, from that perspective, I'm just curious about certain areas, Yeah, you know, which would probably be someone that works at ESPN in the back office in marketing and technology. That's the type of curiosity I have. So yeah. then you'll see things happening, you know, you know, before, maybe before. Yeah, time. I see. 
But just because you first doesn't mean you finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. <laughs> you can you be gotta, first and too early. Yeah, <laughs> you still got to put that that work and the time in. Yeah, um, I'm curious about your curiosity. Just the best, I promise. You guys will love them. You uh, you changed your name. Why did you change your name? Uh, I changed my name because when you look at you know society, when you look at where we at, um, it's hard to market positivity on a consistent basis. Yeah. You know, um, it's hard to push out positive content. You know, for example, people rather me do a reality show, a ratchet one. Hey, we getting drunk tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then do a positive one like, hey, you're going to be really great one day. You know, you're going to raise a good family one day. So sometimes you'll get people having to submit because the opportunity is there that comes with capital. Yeah. Whereas me... I'm not ready to get involved. I want to do only social impact stuff. Even though, you know, I'm from the streets of Queensbridge. I'm from where now. I, I, can, I can throw that swag. I can change my lingo up. Yeah. When I go back home, ain't nobody, you know, in that hood, you know, that, you know, that can relate more to metal world peace. Yeah, I guess. But you, I at the you. same time, it's like, at what point can positive content be consistent? You know, so when you change your name to Metal World Peace, it's like you don't have no other, no other options because you don't really get these opportunities. So it's like, hey, we have an issue in this world. We have an issue in this world. And I don't know if you see it, but it's becoming real chaotic. You know, so I, I headed the game there. Even look at now. Even look at 2024, well, 2023. Yeah. You know, even in the, in the Middle East, we got to bring stability to that region. It's super important. Yeah. On both sides. You know what I mean? So it's not like picking a side, picking that side. No, we need to bring stability there and then also around the world, you know, and we can't forget about, oh, just because we're, you know, maybe you're more affluent or more elite than someone else, but we all are on this planet together. Yeah. Right. So at some point we got to respect that. Yeah. Is it, is it true that you had, cause I was reading some, something about you got into like Buddhism or something like yeah. that. Are you Buddhist or are you, do you, do you identify with any sort of religion? I love all religions. Um, I, I, I like Buddhism personally. Yeah. Because it's something where you could, you know, tap into, breathe, relax, meditate. But I also love, I love Catholics. I grew up in the Catholic system. Me too. Um, I, I, I was born a Baptist, you know, uh, so that's Christianity. Yeah. Um, my brother's Muslim. My favorite person in the whole wide world is Jehovah Witness, my grandma. Yeah. Um, I have Jewish friends. I've been to Shabbats. And some of my best friends is Muslim, you know? So from that perspective, um, I, I still identify more probably with uh, Baptists, being a Baptist, just because that's how I grew up in the Baptist church. But I definitely lean towards, you know, Buddhism um, as something that can keep me centered and then also just be understanding of everyone's religion, yeah. you know? And, um, versus Because so many times at an early age, you learn, oh, this religion is not good. This religion is not good. Then you start thinking about a person that you met and you start putting their religion in front of their face. Yeah, in front you of who they in, who, in front who, of who they really are. Yeah, like who you like who are you? Like I can't I, I wasn't here thousands of years ago, so I don't care what religion you are. You know, and that causes so much tension sometimes. We can't let religion cause tension. It, it should cause it should bring people together. Yeah. It should be it shouldn't separate people. Yeah. You know. It is. It's it, nowadays it just <laughs> seems to be like a, a conflict with everything. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, like if you don't believe what I believe or feel what I feel, then you're like you're wrong. And yeah, it's like when, when did when did that become like that's not the human experience because everyone is so unique from where they've come it's, from. Exactly. That how do we say that like you believe this and I believe that you're wrong because I believe this. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you hit it. Little you pinpoint accuracy. Hit it on the nose. Like we're all so unique. We're all so special. Yeah. Right. So why do I have to agree with you? You know, or why do I have to be like you? Yeah. If I want to be like you, then I'm going to say, hey, I, I want to be like you. But yeah. if I don't want to be like you, I don't want to be like you. Yeah. You know, we, we're all so special, and I think we got to get back to that. Yeah. How do you think we get back to that? You know, I think just with just the future of how it's going now, I feel like everybody's more open to learning about others. Um, I think the you know, technology is great, even though it is being streamlined, you know, currently as we speak. But I feel like the platform is, it, it makes it available for you to do a podcast. You don't have to go to a network. You can get your personality out. Others can get their personalities out with yeah. their brands and just who you, and we get a chance to get a chance. To, we're getting a chance to know each other more now, I think. Yeah. You know? Um, but then I think like what you said earlier, it gets crazy because 
when you said it earlier, which is 100% true, is I, I've been in the space internet since I think you won the finals 14 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, I've noticed that, like you said, and I've fully experienced this, is like if you're not doing the crazy sort of uh, <laughs> attack or yeah, the yeah. violence or the fight or the thing, it doesn't get, like when we talk about this, it's not going to be the clip that goes viral. You know, it's going to be right, a clip right. that goes viral where you talk about the fight. <laughs> Right, and right, it's kind of right. like a, it's just kind of like a yeah. up ecosystem yeah. that we're in now. No, it's true, man. It's true. And from my perspective, I have a, like, I can easily say podcast launching. His game is weak. Yeah. Yeah. You just, <laughs> right? just straight to And go viral and get it going. But that's not what I want to do. So the way I'm going about it is not necessarily catching on to different things. That's why I had to go back to school for digital marketing. Yeah. That's why I had to go back to school for coding. Because if I'm going to another platform, yeah, they're going to do all the work. But that doesn't happen in my case. I got to do the work. I got to plug in the APIs from Lipson straight to Spotify. So are you, making, gotta, a, are you making a platform? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm doing a platform. Well, on, for, for, for hosting of what kind of content? Just multiple podcasts um, and a lot of things, digital marketing agency, just technology. I got a dev shop. Okay. Yeah, so I have developers, a lot of developers and CTOs and stuff. Yeah. But I got. But the only way I can get my content out, if I want to do something consistently positive, I got to build it. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna get. You know, it's not not a lot of not a lot of clickbait. I don't got sound bites. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of that stuff, but I still think I have something interesting. Yeah. I mean, you thought I was interesting enough to come on your show. No, you are. It's not millions and millions of views, but maybe I'm interesting enough to come on your show. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. I mean, at the end of the day, like I don't give a <laughs> if it's not. Millions. I I just like interesting people, man. Because I, I I had one guy tell me. Wanted me to do a podcast. Yeah. And they said, the reason they didn't pick me up is because I have my act together. What? I couldn't believe it. Wait, someone, someone like, like literally told you that? Literally told me that, man, so you got your act together. C come call me later. So, you know, because I'm like, because I went back to school. You know, because I'm trying to do something else positive and do my philanthropy. And because I got my act together. Was it once you come on a podcast, start fighting people? Like, I don't get it. You know, it's a, I could, I, and I thought about it and I laughed and I said, you know what? I'm just going to continue to do what I do. And I'm not moving from the iron line. You know, I'm going to continue doing what I do. But that was, it was just so interesting to hear that. I couldn't believe I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think, I think full circle though, I think in time too. I mean, look at look at sort of the, the most successful podcasters, right? Like Joe Rogan, for example. Right. Go. I really like his podcast. He's he's the kind of person that like he's yeah. There's moments that are super viral with like super famous people, but he he overall is just interviewing people that he's genuinely interested in, and he's not trying to. It's not trying to like make it something that it's not. Yeah. To yeah, just yeah. get attention. I mean, he's done it for so many years. I think over the next five to ten years, there will be people who that's their still their focus is just like genuine good conversation and trying to learn and understand. That's always going to continue to rise because I think the clickbait culture of like, oh, you know, if I'm able to be like, I fought, you know, <laughs> Metal World Peace. Yeah. It's like that's obviously going to get more views. <laughs> like, and right, if, yeah, yeah, it's, true, it's true. obviously going to get more views. Right, understandable. It's entertainment. But but like, I think at the end of the day, I think in in time, it's the the good always kind of just continues to rise. Maybe just a little slower. I think also some people can't get a perception out of their head of someone that's evolving. Right. So they expect like, for example, me, yeah, I used to be, you know, super vital on the court. I had this personality where if I came out with a podcast and just looked for clickbait, it'll probably go viral. Yeah, for sure. Because of whatever, whatever things I've done in the past. But in terms of evolution, sometimes people are not ready for evolution. They don't they don't see you in that light. Yeah. And it's like, OK, do I go back for clickbait and maybe get a, you know, a contract or a sponsorship or do I stick to what I'm doing? And staying on the iron line, and that's how I feel about it. You know, sometimes yeah. people are not really ready for evolution. Yeah. Well, people want you to be what they what they think of you, or what they think is like maybe in that sense, like what's going to be best for them and their platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is just kind of it's lame. Which is understandable. If you, I mean, I understand. I don't know. I don't know if I understand. It's lame. It, it, it is kind of lame, but I understand if you have a bottom line and you're running, say you're running a platform for someone else, right? That's just the chair, and they're going on their vacations. And you got to operate daily. And you're still making the decisions on who's getting paid and who's not. You know, um, I guess at some point, if you don't know how to take advantage or monetize this type of, this type of content, yeah, right, 
you don't understand how to, you know, whatever, what type of paid ads should you do on this type of content? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right, what type of sponsorship should you, should you go after with this type of content? Yeah. Right, so if you don't understand that world, then I understand why you wouldn't, you know, yeah. well, sign, you a, sign a guy like this to a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So, so you, are you going to have your own podcast then? Yeah, I already started working on it. It's called Test Your Greatness. Test Your Greatness. Yeah, it's called Test Your Greatness, uh, where we just want to encourage people to just test their greatness and never give up. Um, we're in the... It's not out yet. We're in beta right now. Um, we've got a couple of events coming up. But I'm excited about it. And we, we're also going to have the other podcast uh, for other athletes that want to just get into their bag, right, yeah. on our platform. That's, that's fine, but I, I won't be <laughs> engaged in, yeah. in those type of podcasts. What, what did you do? So after you retired, what did you do to continue to, to make money? Because you always hear these stories about, like, retired either football or NBA players that just basically go broke. What did you do to maintain yeah. um, your livelihood? Well, you know, it's really tough because uh, you, you go through ups and downs. But one of the things that I decided to do when I retired was go back to school. Yeah. Because you got to think about it. Inflation. Not everybody is ready up for inflation. Yeah. Right? So if, if you're already playing pro sports, no matter what the sport is, even entertainment, even entertainment, or even entrepreneurship. Yeah. Right? If you're focused in your area and now you run into this cash and things are going well, whatever, whatever happening, if you're not focused on tax strategies... Yeah. If you're not paying attention to inflation, right? It's just things like that. It's not your fault. You just got caught up in the in the whirlwind, right? So now your lifestyle is one, but inflation is going in another direction. So by default, that it's going to balance out. Yeah. Right. So at some point, you got to hit the brakes, right? And you got to be com. And then you got the emotional perspective. Do you feel comfortable not wearing jewelry? Yeah, letting it go. Right. Do you feel comfortable just having your home? Right, and then building for the future versus showing what you got. Yeah. Right, because that's you know inflation. That's going to affect inflation too, depending on how much money you have in your account. Because you know that chain is not you know uh, maybe the Rolex is uh, yeah, yeah, but it, appreciating. The other shit's not appreciating. No way. Well, a lot of it's not appreciating. The gas is not appreci appreciating. You know what's your tax strategy? How are you thinking about it? And if you're paying an account manager or accountant or CPA firm, well, with inflation. If you're paying these big prices you was paying when you was getting the bag, you can't sustain that. So what do you actually know? Right, yeah. where you could do this at home and just scale it from your own home family office. Yeah. Right, and scale it up. And, and I think that's, it's not the athlete's fault. It's just the lack of education. So we're here to pick the athletes up. We don't, don't be discouraged. Entrepreneurs, athletes, celebrities. Don't be, this is why I launched my firm. Yeah. This is why I, from, from scratch, launched my firm, you know, really to be supportive. You know, so this is something you actively do. Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a CPA accounting firm, have food sharing, all in house. Was yeah. that after? So that was obviously after you retired. Yeah, yeah after after I retired, just... actually a little bit during, but during I was still into basketball, honestly. Um, but then when I retired, I went back to school and built up, you know, my my, my uh, private equity operations firm. Nice. Yeah. Is that so? Is that one of the? Do you have other businesses besides that? Yeah, we have a lot of businesses inside. We have EasyCareLink.com, which is a nursing SaaS platform that provides nurses to facilities. Um, I'm on the board of that company. We have Buttercloth.com, uh, which is a uh, Easy Care Link. We took from uh, uh, six figures of revenue to um, seven figures, high seven figures, then Buttercloth from zero revenue to high eight figures. Right are now, these are these companies that like you're actively like. Are you like a uh, like a minority partner, or are you like a, a owner, like a financer? It varies. It yeah. varies. Um, I have services. I don't. I don't uh, in finance. I do have uh, private equity vehicles yeah. where people could invest, but I can't solicit. But I do have private equity vehicles. But um, as of right now, some I'm on the board and have maybe more equity, and then some I have you know a little bit of equity. It just varies. We have about thirty companies in the portfolio, and we got to actively work with them. Some of them don't do well. You know, some of them don't last and some of the companies last. Yeah. You know, um, and now it's all about just continuing to add value to the companies um, cont and continuing to pick good founders. Yeah. You know, and just, you know, so this is kind of, you know, the world that I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you most, what do you, what are you most invested in or most passionate about now? Like right now today? You know, right now I'm, more, I'm most passionate about my team. You know, I'm most passionate, you know, we just built out a sales vertical. So super excited that it's going to work across different genres um, and I, right now, and at this point, you're talking about eight years of doing this. It's eight years yeah. of hard work. So from that perspective, it's no longer me bootstrapping. 
it's more about me, you know, really being supportive to my team members. So I'm really most passionate about how can I, how can I help one of my members today? Yeah. Because that's the only thing, you know, at this point, you know, when, at a certain point when you run a company, it depends, you know, where you're at, but it's almost out of your control. Yeah. At some point in time, it's out of your control. So all you have is your word. You can only motivate that day. <laughs> because yeah. after, after that Zoom call, they're going to go out and do what they, you know, whatever they feel is best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm most passionate about being supportive for my team. Yeah. It's tough, man. Running businesses is tough. I think a lot tougher than people think. Yeah. Um, and, and the hardest thing, I think, is finding people and how to keep people motivated. Yeah. So how, how, do you, how do you keep people motivated? You know, I, I try to... Uh, empower uh i try to be on the same level um not be like i'm higher than you or i know more than you i'm actually learning from you and i'm hopefully empowering you and hopefully this journey and experience is something you would have never gotten anywhere else and it's something that you could take and grow with yeah. and build your, your own career yeah we would love for you to stay with us but this is really for you so it's like you know trying to do different things like that to keep people motivated you know to continue to collaborate with us you think the sports background and being being in sports and basketball for so long like has added to your ability to be a part of i guess a, a team in a sense yeah 100 percent. when i you got to think about it when i first got into business i had no background yeah so when i retired the first day when i retired i remember i was in bed i was laying down i woke up the next morning super depressed couldn't get out of bed i'm like man what am i going to do because I, I knew i wanted to be a head coach but I knew that was going to be difficult right after retirement because of my career. Yeah. Even though I'm super, I have a high basketball IQ. So as I'm thinking about what I'm going to do, I'm like, man, I ain't good at anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm in bed about two, three, four hours. I'm just like in this deep, deep stare. I literally replayed every moment of my career in my head, the yeah. good times, the bad times. So then I, and, and as I thought about it, Something hit me and said, oh, wow, I was an architect major in college. That was my first major. I was going to be a math teacher. My second major was art. But when I was going to the NBA, I dropped all my classes. I, I took a communications class, and I just knew I was going pro. So that stopped at 19, right? At 37, I retired. So I said, man, if I was going to do that back then, I said, if I tap into that, I think I'm going to be all right. So then I called UCLA, <laughs> and I applied for extension courses. I actually studied for my Series 7. Um, but I didn't want to sit behind a desk. I knew I wanted to do something in athletes, entrepreneurship, but I definitely didn't want to be behind a desk. Yeah, I don't blame you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I said, so although it was also hard, so that was one thing, um, but then I went back to school for digital analytics, coding, business analytics, Google analytics. I learned how to work all the platforms from GitHub to AWS, and I was learning the stuff on my own even how to read PPMs and how to read contracts, understand, learning the languages of hair tools, whereas, and all this stuff, because it's expensive. If I'm trying to get a deal done, if I got to call an attorney, so some attorneys charge $1,200 an hour. Yeah, it's insane. Is it, you can't sustain that. Do you, do you think it was easier going back to school after? Because like, I remember being in school when I was younger, and I, I eventually dropped out because I couldn't keep paying for tuition. Yeah. But I also found myself younger being like, damn, I don't really like this. Like, This is not for me. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, I went on my own way and I was able to be successful. So, you know, glory to God for that. But, yeah. like, after that, and for you, obviously, after you, you know, you put that stuff to the side, you came back. Do you think it was easier for you to, to learn? Like, was it that was that process easier then than you think it would have been when you were younger? Yeah, basically? it was so hard, yo. I, I had so many stressful days. It's insane. Because even when I first started, I said, okay, I'm going I'm to do an online class. So I start my UCLA extension course. I go online. I'm super stressed. I, I can't learn, right? So I call them back and I say, listen, I need to go into the class. I said, can I please start this over? Do I have to pay again? They was like, nah, don't worry about it. So I had to go into the class and just talk to people and talk to the professors. You learn better that way. I learn better like by seeing and also in person. Yeah. Um, but on, yeah, I, I learned, but I communicate better with boring documents. I, so I like diagrams, but I communicate better when I see like a boring document. <laughs> and you mean boring like just like something extensive that is Just like, like Google Docs. Okay. You know, I can see what's happening. You know, I can map it out better line by line by line by line. And then the diagrams is good too. Like it can give you a vision of the future, but I, I can see 
better just by boring words, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> I was never, I just, I remember school, I was just not good at it. I wasn't yeah. good at it. I don't know why. I like wasn't I just, good at reading. I wasn't good at comprehension. I mean, I can read, I, I, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't comprehend. Like, I couldn't read a, you know, a, a book and then tell you, hey, so what happened in paragraph two? And I'll say, this happened in paragraph two. It'd be a red mark coming back. Yeah. <laughs> so you were at the, at the, like, sort of regurgitating what it was. No, nah, I couldn't. I couldn't just comprehend. Our comprehension was real. I passed the SATs based off math. I was, math, I was good. Yeah. Math, I was pretty solid, but um, the, the comprehension part was where I always ran into trouble. What about, what about, and then this is back to basketball, but what was the hardest thing for you in basketball? The hardest like, thing what were you me, not good at? The hardest thing for me in basketball was going up against me. <laughs> yeah. That was the hardest thing because uh, my passion and emotion was just unstable. It was just, a, it was a fire that is really hard to, you probably, people saw me play, you know, but that thing was really burning inside. Just because so, you just, it wasn't good enough? You wanted it to be better? It was... Uh, I just love, I don't know, I think I, it's just weird because I, I love to hustle. I love to play. I'm never satisfied. I hate losing, but I only won one championship. First year in, in NBA, we won 13 games or 15 games. I couldn't deal with it emotionally and mentally because I, I, I typically don't lose. I typically win everywhere I was at. You yeah. know? So from that perspective, me was the biggest hurdle. Did you ever have conversations with other players about that like i'm always so curious because obviously you guys are all at the top of your game when you're playing you're on that team like mm -hmm. was there was there anyone who stood out who you ever had a conversation with that like pushed you or helped you or made you feel like i don't know the uh, i don't the not the same as them because obviously you're a different yeah. person but was able to help you kind of overcome that it was a few plays man like Derek, i had an interesting conversation with Derek fisher and uh during the playoffs because him and kobe are just incredible as we know Derek Fisher hit just as many big shots as Kobe Bryant. If you really look at it, yeah. Derek Fisher hit just as many big shots as Kobe Bryant. So one day I'm in the back, and I'm not afraid to take big shots, but they're not just going in all the time. But I'm never passing it up, if that makes sense. I see what you're saying. Right? I don't mind having a bad shooting percentage, and fans is like, you should not shoot. I'll shoot it again. <laughs> but I wanted to actually go in, so I said, Derek, I was like, how do you make big shots? I'm in the back of the... I asked Kobe first, and I asked him at the same time. I said, I got to ask you something. So Kobe gave me this quick answer, and then I let Kobe get back to being busy, and then, then I went to Derek. Derek sit right behind Kobe. So what, I did, a, what did Kobe say, though? Uh, he might have said something like, just take the shot. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> classic, He might have said bro. something like, just he, do it. He might have said something like that. But I had a longer conversation with Derek. Yeah, go ahead. And when Derek was breaking it down, you know, he was like, he's, I can't remember exactly, it's 2010, but he said, you know, just the same rhythm, same motion, same things you do in practice, um, you know, try to block things out. So, but he, but he gave like a, maybe it was a 20 minute conversation or 15 minute, something like that, which helped me in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, so that was like an emotional kind of, um, like I, I felt like stable emotionally with that conversation I had with Derek. A real, really interesting conversation. Cause he made you feel like you could just, you could do it based on what you've already done. Yeah, because it, 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 it's like saying, how do you read or how do you answer this problem? I can't, to ask him, how do you make big shots? It's nothing tangible that you can touch. <laughs> yeah. You just got to like feel it yeah, <laughs> and believe in it. <laughs> it's such a crazy concept because I, you always, I always wonder that. It's like, obviously everyone top of their game. What's like really the, like what's really separating the greatest players from like just making the shots. Yeah. Because you know when you see like the free throws or whatever, obviously some players are just better at free throws or, you know, court shots, but it's like what's really stopping that from happening? Obviously defense, that's one thing, but like it seems a lot of times it's, it's just like a mental. It is. It's, a, you know, sometimes we don't, under, people really don't understand where they carry tension. So, you know, sometimes you have your forehead like this. Some people walk with their forehead scrunched all day. They don't even know it's scrunched. It's like just like that. You're holding tension. Yeah. Right? Or you might have your shoulders up. Or your hips, or your jaw, and you don't even know why my jaws is clenched. If you just relax, like, oh wow, they they <laughs> they was tight all day. Yeah, you know. So sometimes we hold that tension. It's physical, but it's also a little bit spiritual. It's a little bit mental, and so and emotional. So sometimes you got to understand your body. Yeah, you, know? you have. You know, I think everything speaks for a reason. Your body speaks for a reason. So just understanding things like that could help a, a performance. Anybody's performance, even at their workplace. Yeah, because if you're reading a document, tense, like what are you thinking about 
Second paragraph. Yeah. It's Did like you a, miss the second line? Yeah. Are you even getting all of that information <laughs> yeah. properly? Because you're, you're like tight. Yeah, because yeah. you're tight. Yeah. I, 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 uh, did, did you ever have any sort of uh, conversations with Kobe that were like very powerful or was it always, he's just like business? Kobe's incredible. Like, um, never had any real powerful conversation. I think me and Kobe are very similar from the point of being introverted. Yeah. But we were, I think obviously I was a Laker. He had something to do with that. I think he respected how hard I worked, but I think our conversations came from just playing together and obviously it's his team and I was took me a while to confide to that. Yeah, I saw I saw a clip <laughs> you like where you're used to doing more. Yeah. And you kind of have to you let it go a little bit. He was big on I mean, obviously I'm not as good as Kobe, but I got my own journey. A hundred percent, yeah. Right. But he was really supportive and he understood me. I think he got a clip where I read a clip where he talked about he had to understand the player. And it wasn't that he was saying, Oh yeah, meta. I'm going to give you more shots. It was a thing like he understood how, how I was feeling. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and, I, and I really, and I caught on to that, that he really understood how I was feeling. But he got a job to do because this is his team. He got a big job to do. Yeah. And he didn't let me get in the way, but he also would give me these little hints of, you know, you're going to be all right. I understand how you're feeling. But it wasn't an emotional kind of conversation. Yeah. You know, he was never like, he's not going to cry. Kobe's not going to be man, I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> he's never going to, he's never going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, you, you, you played it. Like I said earlier, you played such a golden era. Yeah, for sure. 100%. I, I, I damn. I hope it's, I, I just want it to be like that again. I, I think, uh, I, yeah. I think we're getting back. Yeah. I think people are going to be surprised at where the league is going to go. Because I always thought, like, you know, when you take players like, uh, I mean, obviously there's so many great players, but LeBron obviously doesn't have much more time. And I was always curious, like, and I mean, he's even said it, like, he doesn't know how much more time he has in the league. Yeah. But I was always curious, like, do you, do you think it, when players like that leave, do they need new players? Like, obviously there's never going to be someone like, you know, LeBron, there's never going to be someone like these people again. But do you think you need new players to like create that sort of hype, or there's enough players already who can create that? The players, one of the issues we have, we try to ride out these stars, yeah. right? Like, okay, Stephen Curry, for example, that Warrior team where Mark Jackson helped put together that team with RIP Jerry West. Yeah. So they put together this team, although Stephen Curry was a huge star, but that team became stars. Stephen Curry, his winning made him a star. Yeah, he yeah. came when he was like, whatever, 10th pick or whatever he was. Clay Thompson, Draymond, I think they was all high picks, but they became stars. Yeah. And now they are stars and they are embedded in history versus just giving it to somebody. If somebody, like for example, SGA this year, probably should have gotten the MVP. Cause you could have, you could have went Tatum if you wanted to. But they okay, they had three stars on that on that team. They were just a really good team. Okay, you give it to Joker. Understandable. But it's not understandable with SGA. He deserved to be a star the best team in the league, right, from that perspective. So I think if somebody earns it, let them be the star. The Knicks, for example, look at Brunson. He's is becoming a star. Now, he is a winner. We know that. He won in high school and college. But his name wasn't as recognized. Yeah. You know, when he first got into the NBA, now he's with the Knicks playing well. He's a star. He earned it. So you think they hype people up too much? Because, like, the Zion Williamson thing, like, he, he I'm not saying he's not a, not a great player, but right. that was an example of... When he was coming in, they were like, this guy is going to be this. going to be," And they were really pushing that. Well, he's really it, incredible. Yeah, he's amazing. <laughs> and he, but he didn't do like what everyone, like what they made him out to be what he was going to do. But Maybe think, he's still going to do it. Maybe it's still time. I think Zion's issue was getting hurt. Yeah. So that like kind of, you, you know, imagine you're marketing someone, then they hurt. Yeah. You, you, you're going to have to market someone else. So I think his issue was different, but there are other people that are just being superstar, a star like are you kidding me? Do you know what a you know, you know, media? Do you understand what a star is? Do you understand what a superstar is? Not everyone's a star. Some yeah. people are just really good players. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, what do you think separates the superstars? Just how you play the game, like your 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 um output. But also, doesn't it take game. more time to be like that's a superstar? No, you. Wimbledon is a superstar. Yeah. He's a star. 
because not a lot of people can guard him, right? But yeah, and then sometimes it might take somebody, like Michael Jordan, he got into the league. He was 21 as a rookie. At some point in time, he turned 21. Whereas versus LeBron was a star at 17. LeBron was a star way before Michael, even though Michael was a McDonald's All-American, had a, you know, played very well in college. But LeBron was a star earlier in the NBA in, term, in terms of age. Yeah. Right? Sometimes it takes people longer, you know, to become a star. And I think, I think your work and your output and how you affect the game, you know, are you a role player? Are you the go-to guy? Did you just become the go-to guy? Did, like Ben Wallace, he's a star. He yeah. wasn't a star in the beginning, but he became a star without offense. I think you just got to let it, let it happen naturally. Some guys was a star two years ago. <laughs> And they're not a star today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, star, star, superstar, and they are not a star today. So then, then would that make them not, quote unquote, a superstar if they're not one today? Because I feel like wouldn't yeah, a, superstar a superstar sustain? A, a superstar will sustain, absolutely, 100%. I'm yeah. not saying a superstar is any better than any other individual. Right. But in terms of the game, yes. yeah, a superstar is a star superstar because they was a star over time for a long period of time. So, not just one year because, you know, you're on the team. Yeah, yeah. It's like a superpower team. What, so who do you think are the superstars today? Uh, I think SGA is a, well, it depends on media and your game. Sometimes, like Tim Duncan, superstar, but he's a superstar ball player, didn't necessarily care about media. Yeah, he didn't get a Right, he like didn't even at care. All. So sometimes people to this day might think Tim Duncan's, you know, one of the worst players in history because you just see his personality until you got you to watch his game and look at his stats. And you'd be like, hold on. He's a superstar. Yeah, you're right. So do you think there's a little He's bit of... pretty incredible. Do you think there's a little bit of, like, you have to kind of play it up for the media a bit? No, I don't think you got to play it up. I think, I think you could be a superstar and have that kind of personality of a Tim Duncan or whatever. But we just got to... We got to recognize that more. Yeah. You know, maybe you don't get the big Nike deal, but you're still a superstar. Like, SGA to me is a superstar. There are some other people that's becoming... Um, Brunson's... He's a star. I don't know. He's, he's almost a superstar. In New York, he's a superstar. But I think he got to have a couple more good years. Yeah. You know, and he'll be a superstar. His jersey potentially could be retired, you know, in the garden. Yeah. Massive. What do you think about Luca? Luca's a superstar. I think he got to play more defense, but he does other things well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does other things well. His defense is, is actually getting better. He got an offensive foul in the finals. You see him hustling a little bit. But there's a couple things he can do, you know, uh, to, you know, to kind of be that complete player, I think. Yeah. But, you know, his game is, uh, his offensive game is pretty solid. So you still, you obviously still are so involved in basketball. Do you think you'd ever get a position like a, like a head coach? Like oh, you said? Uh, well, I want it. I'm going to tell you that. I want it. But getting it, you know, you're, you're not the one. I can't sign myself. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> but I definitely want it 100%. How does, that, how does that process go? Do you just have to, like, try to petition to do just it? You just got to ask and hope, hope to get a yes. <laughs> Yo, someone, someone get him a job, bro. You just got to ask and hope to get a yes, man. But wouldn't that, would that your other businesses no because uh, i have a board okay and executives <laughs> so i could it's just a signature is there anything else like in, involved in the nba that you'd want to be a part of um coaching is top of mind yeah uh, i really love coaching I, I set my company up so i could if i ever had to coach it's just a signature yeah um and you know all all compliance is met what about but, what about like you know they the like shacks like really good at this like commentary stuff would you ever do that if they ever I'm not really into the commentary. Um, I like like Spectrum, Lakers TV. Yeah, I'm more into local. It's le it pays way less. Yeah, but I'm more into local t TV than national TV. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really into national, so it doesn't really um, appeal to me. I see what you're saying. Yeah, damn man, <laughs> you, <f> God, <laughs> I just you're interesting as f to me. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I like how you were. I like how you you were. You said you had an art major. That was my second major. It's that's that yeah, definitely that makes sense major. after talking to you. Yeah, you're just a more creative major. dude. Yeah, yeah, do you ever do anything else like that's not like that no one would know about? That's like super left field of what they would think of you. I mean, I think now it's cats coming out the bag in terms of like product managing, developers managing. I didn't expect this. Technologists. Yeah, yeah a lot of people don't know. I manage. Got about thirty two devs that I manage with my CTOs. Um, I think that was unexpected and, you know, um, you know, building a, a, a firm that's fiduciary based around fiduciaries and stuff like that. I think that type of stuff is unexpected. Um, but that's been my main focus over the last couple of years, honestly, just doing that. Um, 
um, wanting to launch this firm and having clients and now building out the offering, you know, different things like that. Um, you know, and being not me personally, I can't do everything, but from attack strategies to yeah. diversifying your portfolio to helping not only athletes, but people create generational wealth planning because things they're not thinking about. But it's mostly coming from the passion because it's coming from as an athlete making mistakes myself. Yeah. And then also my other colleagues that's going through things that's like, man, how can we make a difference? How, how can you architect a strategy where you can really help being yeah. an architect major? Right? Maybe yeah. I'm not majoring in architecture, but I can, all, I can architect something different. You know, being an architect, maybe that's going to take me five years. I can put in that time, but is my time better spent building something else? I see what you're saying. You know? I'm curious. Um, could we, could you, can you jump on real quick? Is that okay? Can you yeah, do that? Yeah, do Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just jump over here. That's, that's live. Ron Artest the third. The third. I'm junior. Let's go. Even though I changed my name to Metal World Peace, my dad is senior. <laughs> so, I, I guess I'm just kind of curious. Like you're, you're obviously you're playing basketball. Yeah. Has he? Has he? Like, how much has he added to your game? Uh, it's a lot of mental stuff we do when we like practice. Just pull that a little closer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is it better? Yeah, it's better. Oh, yeah. Sure. Right, yeah. Well, no, you're great. Time? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can you ask me one more time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, I'm curious. Obviously, your father. How much has he added to your game in basketball? Um, a lot. Uh, I feel like, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm a great defender. Um, I feel like I'm a strong player. I'm uh, coming into my body now, so I feel like I just, just I feel like I watched him growing up. So yeah, kind of just picked up stuff. He didn't have to really teach it. I just kind of got it. Yeah. What about just as a father? Not in regards to basketball. Just uh, for me. Just like staying humble, um, yeah. not better than anybody, anything can happen to anybody. So you just just kind of just roll with the punches, whatever's going on, just make it the best. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I just always find, I always like, I love, I love seeing like the, the be passed down in a, in a positive way, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah man, he's a good friend, got a lot of great friends. Um, that's the one thing about, about Ron, Ron the third is that, um, you know, he, his friends are attest to that. You know, which is like the most important piece. You know, what type of human are you? And who you spend your time and with. And he yeah. checks all those boxes. And, I'll, and, he's, st- and he's pursuing, uh, approaching, get, you know, getting into the NBA. Yeah. Which I love that focus. You know, so that's super exciting. You know, and everybody has a different time when they get in. Yeah. You know, so I really love that. Um, and he's also super creative from producing music from a young age. And, you know, got a lot of great the cre- creativity side, the, the great human side. And obviously the athletic side. Yeah. You know, um, it's really exciting to see what he's going to do in the future. Yeah. Is it, do, you, do you ever feel pressure that, like, you had to play basketball? Uh, not really. Um, so growing up, I wasn't, like, obviously I'm around basketball, but I wasn't always playing. Yeah. So I remember, like, living, I was living here in, like, eighth grade, and I had got in trouble. So my punishment was kind of to go back to Indiana to – uh, stay at my mom and just like leave LA. Yeah. So I told him I was gonna play on the basketball team out there. So I tried out for the team and made it, and then never went back. But I was playing like the local school intramurals. So yeah. Just, like playing with the kids. Did you? I, I, I told him I was on the team. He, he ended up calling the coach. <laughs> at the end of the year. I remember the coach, that. Coach was like, uh, yeah. He didn't, he didn't. Did you want him to play basketball? Play. Well, yeah. I, I thought. He, yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, not, not forcing. I never forced him. Yeah. Because I didn't. I never wanted to put that type of pressure. I'm like, you know. If they want to play, they can play. But I remember calling this coach. And it was after the season, so I called this coach, and I'm like, hey, so, how, so how did Ron play? Can you tell me what you saw? He's like, what you mean? I said, yeah, how, how did he play on the team? He's like, he didn't play on the team. <laughs> Wait, so what? then I called Ron. I was like, yo, you, I thought you was on the team. He said, I was playing intramurals. I said, intramurals. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I was uh, like. It wasn't really like <laughs> a passion. Um, yeah. And then right after that, I moved right back here. And start uh, playing at Palisades yeah. High School and then finished at Beverly. But I really started playing like sophomore year of high school. So it's like kind of late. Yeah. But I like it now. I feel, feel, feel way better about it. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely got better. And just been working on my body too, lifting a lot more and just feel, feel good. Did it's you, exciting. How, how much does the lifting you think affect being good at basketball? Because like obviously it's such a skill based yeah, thing. Yeah, obviously yeah. being in shape makes sense. But like, I mean, if you're not, the most skilled on the court, like uh, offensively, 
If you're strong enough, you could, you know, you might gotta yeah. grab some bigger guys, or you know, you just be a better defender, or just like. Did did you did you train a lot? Like, did you were you known for lifting? Yeah, I, it was different because, well, my dad got me working out early. So when I was eight, you know, uh, my dad would have me doing a duck walk, bunny hops, push ups, sit ups. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing that at my, eight, at eight, and then ten. So my dad had me. I didn't realize what that was doing to me. So my my dad was working me out since I was young. So then when I got older. Um, when, when it was time to train and lift weights, well, I was like, okay, this is exciting. I've been doing this since I was eight years old. Yeah. My body would not, I don't think I would have been ready for what I was doing in college if it wasn't for my dad. Like, just doing it. And he, he would trick me. <laughs> he would do these little tricks to make us work out. Like what? Man, he would, maybe it was for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, things like that. Just like trick you. Oh, you can't do it. Oh, you can't beat me. And then he like slows down and then you beat him. Oh, shit. And then the next father. day, you're like, I can beat, I just beat my dad. Damn. You know, things like that. He was like playing all these little games. <laughs> Damn. So did you, did you, did you grow, like, spend a lot of time growing up? Like, was it like that with him? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Like, like, did, 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 if what he just said, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have moments like that? Was it? Yeah, like a little bit. Like, yeah. often we'll, we'll be like shooting around and stuff and we'll just like just practice r random moves, but like we would skip the fundamentals, you know, we'll yeah. just start like, Shooting fadeaways, yeah. like all the fun stuff. Yeah, so skipping all the basics and just, just all Kobe fades. Yeah, yeah. I know. We was younger um, when he when we first started really getting into it. As I was thinking about, you know, how where should we start? You know, so I said, okay, at least have the mechanics. But then we, I did skip the fundamentals, so now we're bringing a lot of things back together. And his game is actually becoming way more complete. Once it, I think you'll see a really good player in the future. For yeah. Sure. Is it a possibility for you to to go to the league? I think so. As long as I don't get hurt, it's just yeah. Yeah, I, I got hurt three years in a row, uh, three okay. surgeries back to back. Yeah, like knee stuff, shoulder, both ankles. Okay, yeah, not knees, not, not knees. Just yeah. enough, not, enough to miss the the tryout. Yeah. So just, yeah. At least not the knees, man. Yeah, 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 Shoulders, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah ankles. So just, yeah, just enough. Just, just enough to like keep you out keep you out but I love his resilience I'm and I remember he was getting hurt and I felt bad I'm like man he's getting hurt and he said he's not stopping I was like that's what this is about yeah there's so many players that got to the league at some point in time and had great careers you know and I think that's what it's about the persistence the hard work because then it builds character then at some point in time you're gonna be in the game and everything you work for is gonna is gonna show at that point in time so it's, it's, it's super exciting do you think there's like an age where it's like you're too old to get in a good question. Uh, yeah, I think maybe 38, 35, 34. Yeah. But some but you you see a lot of scenarios where guys got in that 27, 28, 26, 25. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um there's definitely like at some point maybe. Yeah. But I, don't, I think if I don't I don't feel old anymore. Right now, yeah, of course not. not. 25, <laughs> you definitely not old. Yeah. I'm not hearing it from anybody. I'm still just gonna go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for yeah, sure. We're excited, man. Yeah, well, thanks well, I, for yeah having I appreciate me, you coming on for appreciate real. Thank it, you guys. Man. That was yeah, awesome, man. I, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate the conversation, and I thought it was a great show, man. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. And then anything you want to let the audience know about, like you have coming up, or you're excited about, or your podcast, or whatever, let them know. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for having me on your show once again. Uh, Meta World Peace. Uh, if you don't know me, thepandasfriend.com which is our e-commerce brand. It supports yeah. our podcast. And then we also have the Test Your Greatness podcast coming out. Um, look out for Ron Artest III's basketball career and all the creative stuff that he's doing. Um, also, the Artest family. We're doing a lot of great stuff in art. Um, and you know, So just look out for us in general as a whole and as a collective. And uh, stay tuned. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for Thank coming. You, for real. Appreciate yeah, it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man.